Two events that are occupying the minds of traders at the moment include Friday's US jobs report and Sunday's Italian referendum on constitutional change. Looking now at the FX markets, Ron William joins us now from RW Advisory. Ron, welcome. Happy greetings. Good to be back. Well, let's, let's talk first of all about the, the non-farm payrolls on Friday. Um, we were looking like that we're getting something like 175,000 jobs. That's the consensus. How important is this number when looking at euro dollar in the context of Sunday's referendum? Well, it will vary at the moment because we've had such um, wild uh, FX or gyrations at the moment on uh, the dollar index and, and many of the other majors post-US elections. Uh, but there's still much volatility to come, it, it seems. And so it's, it's worth looking at the charts, looking at the, the key trends and, and the levels just ahead of these events just to try and hedge that risk. OK, well, let's, let's, let's begin and turn, first of all, to a chart you brought along which gives us US dollar. And you've put here breakout signals, long-term gains. We've seen this big rise uh, for the dollar as uh, Donald Trump comes through and lays out his policies. We're getting more of an idea whose cabinet's going to be or who his close allies are going to be within government. Uh, but we've got this breakout. Explain more about what's going on. Well, th this is the, a new 13-year high that we've seen on the, on the dollar index. And remember that roughly uh, over 50% of the dollar index is uh, weighted towards the euro. So we're getting a little bit of the, a mirror image of the, what we're seeing on the euro, downside on the euro uh, against the dollar. But either way, it's a 13-year high on the dollar broad-based measure. Um, and that's a breakout of this major one-and-a-half-year trading range that we've been in and many other technical barriers that, that we've been holding for some time. So the dollar's been asleep for the best part of, uh, of that year and a half. And now it's definitely awoken up. Uh, and we've had this very strong surge. Uh, something to watch out for and uh, I put some you know some support levels there if we break back below 100 which we're allowed to or even uh, into 98 30 97 these are healthy correction uh, levels that we could see the dollar index pull back to and even if it did the trend would still be up so uh, it's something to keep in mind and on just looking at your charts, uh, if, if we may, on the real-time basis. Yeah, let's, let's, let's bring up a chart that I think a lot of IG clients will be familiar with. This is pro-real-time, um, directly through the IG platform. Uh, you've got here um, what we call the dollar basket, but at the bottom here you've got a momentum indicator. Explain how this works in conjunction with the chart. Well, the momentum indicator on, on this daily chart that, that you've pulled up, uh, Jeremy, it shows us uh, a move that moves too much too soon. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, that's exactly what it tells us if it's overbought or if it's oversold. It's very self-explanatory in that way. But um, there is a, a pinch of salt that I would uh, advise people to, to use with this indicator at this moment in time. Trend, powerful trends can remain overbought for much longer than we might expect them to be. So although we are starting to unwind a little bit from overbought conditions on the dollar index and uh, starting to unwind on other currencies as well, uh, watch for potential surprises uh, in the trend where it just continues to move higher and higher and higher. Okay, so uh, from, from this point on, how do, you, how do you work out where it's going? What um, technical analysis tools would you apply to give you an idea as to how far up this is likely to go? Well, on the dollar index, it's a little bit more difficult because it's blue sky territory. Sure. We haven't really been here before, and, uh, and then you have to go back to the early 2000s. So you need a lot more historical uh, price action to actually look back on. Um, we can look at that in, in future interviews, and I can give uh, further targets. People often use also, as, as well as the previous uh, highs uh, in, on, on the dollar index, but also Fibonacci uh, extensions and many right. other ways that, that one can actually derive uh, levels. Okay. But at, at the very least now, two things I would say is previous highs back in the early 2000, and uh, if you just do a, a, a measured price objective from the breakout that we've just made on the dollar index, we're going to get it still have a big move on the upside. Okay, all right. So let's switch from dollar basket onto the uh, uh, euro dollar. Now you said this makes up a large part. Of the, of, the, of the dollar index, the dollar basket. Um, go back to, to, to your chart here. And um, clients will be familiar with what we've been talking about a lot here on the IG platform is about this parity target. We've spoken about it before. Yes. Uh, this trend that we've got in place now came down um, uh, sometime um, late last year. Just explain where we are now um, at these levels. Well, uh, at the moment, we're uh, breaking out of this sideways uh, trading range, which again, uh, similar to the dollar index, we've been in for about a year and a half. Uh, the key trigger level on the downside is that uh, 2015 major low at 104.62 uh, on my platform. It might mm -hmm, be in sure. and around that level yeah. on, on other people's uh, data providers. Uh, but that is the trigger level. So if we get a sustained close beneath, uh, beneath 104.62 or thereabouts, 
that then tells you that this 12-year uh, breakdown, which, which uh, this is from when the euro dollar actually was incepted in 1999, so this, this big distribution pattern which has taken place all that time will be reactivated uh, uh, on the downside. And as I like to say, parity becomes a reality. Mm -hmm. uh, we actually do see that big uh, round number once and for all. And uh, we're not too far from it. So if you just calculate the uh, minimum price objective from that trading range, it hits parity. That also ties in with uh, various other technical tools I've used. For example, the GAN structural line comes in at that level, and the probability distribution, there's a small uh, statistical kind of blip there at on the, the lower, mm -hmm. on the lower uh, bottom side, the bottom, yeah. Yeah, which, which comes in. So we have a confluence of support that comes in at parity. So it, it is a technical mm. uh, uh, projection. Okay, um, this chart you've got here goes back multiple years. Let's switch to uh, pro real time and, and bring up the chart we've got here because uh, again, what we've done is we've, we've overlaid uh, the uh, momentum indicator, the RSI at the bottom here. Now this, uh, this chart only goes back to what, the middle of last year. So it gives us uh, a more a detailed look about what's going on and the red dotted line there at the bottom of the top panel is parity. Yes, well I mean I mean it just shows that that how how much lower uh, we can go and it, it is worth actually just adding that space uh, at, the, at the bottom side of the of the chart uh, when you're looking at your trading uh, screen because just to give you a sense of, of, of the downside scope to come. Now, looking at, again, on the same momentum uh, RSI indicator, um, it shows you that we are oversold, we're unwinding from oversold, but again, keep in mind that we could remain in oversold conditions for a while longer because it's a powerful trend. So usually, um, if, if a, a trend is, responds in a very healthy, traditional way, you will get a, a, a temporary respite in the market where it might start to unwind from these extreme levels. But as we speak right now, volatility is at new highs uh, across all the FX markets. Uh, it really is a, a big mover and shaker uh, at right here and now. So add some salt to some of these momentum indicators, pay attention to them, but don't be treating every single signal as a reversal or a sell or a buy signal. It's just an alert signal. Yeah. Uh, and at the moment, even if we get a, a healthy correction on euro dollar, uh, we still are likely to have uh, parity much sooner than we think. Okay, um, so we're talking at 106.30 at the levels at the moment. Are you looking at your minimum price objective as being parity? Yes. Is that, so you look, okay, whereabouts did you put your stop on this chart? Well, it, I mean, it all depends on uh, risk and money management rules mm -hmm. as well. Uh, but generally what I would say is, I mean, if, if, if one were to put on a short trade, certainly having um, a, a, a trailing stop strategy uh, activated in and around uh, the, the, the old highs of that trading range, um, but then also pay attention to the average volatility of whatever time frame you're trading. So if you're, if you're an intraday trader, look at the intraday volatility of, of that uh, uh, rate, or if you're looking over the multi days or weeks, look at, look at that time frame. So I would say focus on the risk and money management rules uh, per se, and then tie that in with some of the technical levels as well. Yeah. Okay, all right, so that's euro dollar. Uh, what about uh, dollar yen, which is another uh, chart you've been looking at? What have you got here? Yes, well, I think dollar yen has been the big shocker in terms of just how um, mu how much it's rocketed yeah. um, on, on the upside. Um, we are, I mean, I, uh, earlier on this week and last week, I was thinking that we we're, we're going to get a, a little bit of a correction. That didn't happen. And after the uh, uh, ADP figures that we got um, uh, midweek, uh, mid mm. which were very positive, the most positive, I think, since January, so that was a big positive surprise for the market. We had a new high breakout on much of the dollar uh, majors, uh, dolly and being a case in point. Um, and that's, that's the breakout now. Now, for me, I was sitting at the screen looking at this, and it, it's uh, quite impressed to see a breakout uh, from this level here at around 114, uh, which is a key uh, zone as measured by the price distribution that I use. Uh, and it tells me that the market, this rally is likely to power into 116 and 118 um, over the next few uh, weeks. So we will, we will likely see that very soon. Uh, it won't be a straight line move, but we're not that far away from it and the momentum is definitely on the right side. Now, what I do want to say is between 116 and 118, let's say around 117, that actually signals a two-third retracement of the entire move um, right. uh, down. So that would be retracing two-thirds of what dolly -N had lost um, on the downside. Key Fibonacci level. Which is a key Fibonacci yeah. level. And Eurodollar um, would have also uh, uh, done the same. And so we're seeing these kind of key pivotal levels on across, across the majors as well. And these are make, and make or break levels yeah. uh, for these markets. Now, dolly -N, I would say 116, 118 is, is, is very important. And this is also, by the way, supported by um, other yen uh, rates. If 
you look at the Japanese yen trade weighted index, mm -hmm. according to whichever platform you can get hold of the data on, mm -hmm. it's also showing uh, further yen weakness ahead. Mm. Okay, uh, let's, let's go on to our, our chart because you're talking about the momentum uh, clearly on, on your chart, you can see there. The momentum indicator is showing overbought. Again, this goes back to what you were saying, wasn't it? When you've got a trend in place, you can be overbought and still carry on with the trend. Yes, well, the trend is your friend, and, and if it continues to be your friend and move in the same direction, you really have to trade price, and price is the primary indicator. That's, that's what I always like to teach uh, clients and friends. And what I would say here is, you know, you are getting an overbought signal. It is actually starting to show potential bearish uh, divergence. So the RSI momentum indicator is making a lower high, or is, is starting to. So that could be a signal of dolly may maybe uh, uh, looking to correct in, in the near term, but here and now, look so you're at talking there, yes, and you're talking there, exactly. So we have a higher high on price and a lower high on uh, on which the momentum bearish. indicator, which which is uh, bearish in the very near term. Yeah. Just just maybe giving an indication. It's a warning signal. The market's likely to take a, a deeper breath mm -hmm. and maybe have a have a respite on the downside. Mm -hmm. uh, but that would be um, a rally. Uh, sorry, a, a correction to buy into. Yeah. Um, uh, within this strong trend, so it's always important to keep in mind that 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 overriding trend, which is very much up. Now now the second point here, which is Another reason why I'm a little bit uh, in two minds as to some of these short-term technical signals, how, how true they might be, is because just you know, for the entire rally that we've had on Dolian, look at the number of indecision candlestick patterns that we've seen. Now you've drawn circles around all those. Explain what they, what they represent. Yes, well, uh, some people might refer to them as doji uh, patterns. That's probably the classic definition of what these mm -hmm. patterns are. And it's when the open and the close are, are the same or, or, or close to each other. Uh, and, the, and the general trading range of that session is quite tight, quite small. So it's just showing there isn't that much trading activity. And if that follows um, a strong move, and then suddenly you get some quiet in the, in the market, that just shows that the market's taking a breath and may uh, correct. Now, each time that we've had the signal, we have not corrected. We've just powered on higher. Mm -hmm. So I, I liken this to the metaphor of, of mountain climbing. You, you're climbing up that, uh, that big mountain, and each time you take a breath, but you carry on higher. And so it's very important to keep in mind that, that these aren't just reversal signals. They also sometimes just tell you that the market's taking a deep breath and it's going to push up higher. So don't always read signals, uh, and I, I say this to myself as well, um, in a binary fashion. It, it can also just be a, a condition of the market just being very strong uh, in this nervous respect. So each time we've had what, something that looked like a reversal signal, it hasn't happened yet. Um, so follow the trend. Yeah, um, we're talking Fibonacci's here. Oh, could you apply it to this rally we've had here and the possible retracement? I mean, we were talking there at 62% 60, uh, retracement on the other two charts we were looking at. If we had a 62% retracement here, it would take us down to about 106. Um, are you talking about that sort of level of retracement from these levels or are you... Um uh, by all means, I mean, we, we could have it. We've had a very strong uh, move on the upside, so we, we could have a correction back into the averages and into the Fibonacci levels that you've mentioned. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if that happened, but again, I would uh, caution that we uh, wait for a price confirmation probably beneath the low uh, at around uh, around the, the, the levels that you've just um, highlighted there yes, on the Fibonacci. Yes, four level, that's that sort of level. Um, yes. So, um, but then you want to lock in more gains, want to lock in more uh, profits on the upside. That's your plan, is it, then, when you get those lows? Well, well yes, absolutely. For as long as this dollar move is in play, and not only the dollar, but yen weakness, there's a two-sided uh, nature to this trade as well. So this, this continues to be bullish in the short term and potentially the long term uh, in the coming weeks. Okay, all right. So very briefly, you would go short at these levels or would you wait for the lower print and then go long? Wait for the lower print uh, to, to, to reassess the position. And for right now, I think a lot of people are already long yeah. uh, and I would encourage them to continue to be long, maybe with some tight stops, just in case if we do get a little bit of respite from these overbought conditions. Yeah. But as a last note, I would say, Keep in mind that trends can go on for much longer than we might think they, yeah. they would. Yeah. Look, okay, Ron, thanks indeed for joining us. Thank you. Uh, it's good to talk to you again. Uh, Ron William joins us there from RW Advisory as we go into uh, what could be a volatile period as we approach the non-farm payroll data out on Friday. That's at 1.30 UK time. And then, of course, we've got the Sunday referendum in Italy, which might provide some volatility and trading opportunities early next week.